Welcome back with us today from the Orange County Fire Authority. We have Captain Larry Kurtz, who's their public information officer, and we have Randy Harper, who is their education supervisor. Good to see you both. Good to see you too. Thanks for having us back. Oh, it's been great. It's been a while since you've been on, so it's wonderful. And uh, I haven't met Randy before. Nice to so meet you. So being that you're education supervisor, mm -hmm. you part of what you do is, of course, getting the word out to the public and maybe the schools and all, how to say stay safe within your home and, and beyond, right? Yeah, absolutely. So part of the um, Orange County Fire Authority mission statement, the very first um, goal is education. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's us um, letting people know um, how to stay safe in their homes, especially um, right now it's during the holiday seasons that's coming up and giving them an idea how not to have to call us. Yeah, that's the key, right, yeah. Larry? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and the primary thing we're going to talk about today are smoke alarms. And you brought along a couple. Yes. One that looks uh, old enough. You know, what that reminds me of is like the old old style computers that all had those yeah. beige looks, right. and they would turn yellow after. Right. That, uh, so. When this started out, it, it was white. Uh, and, yeah. And we hate to use the word old. We like to say experienced. Yes. <laughs> so what? Uh, Smoke alarms, they're, they're in every set of homes, mm -hmm. and we walk underneath them every day. People don't give them a lot of thought. Uh, smoke alarms, though, they have a shelf life on yes, them. Yes, they do. You know, we always tell people, you know, changing your batteries and your smoke alarms, you know, when the time falls back, when the time moves forward every six months. And most of these have 9-volt batteries in them. They're very easy to replace. You just have to go through the house and circulate them, or you get that situation at 2 o'clock in the morning yes. where it starts to beep at you. But one of the other things we want to talk to people about is the age of the smoke alarm. Mm -hmm. Now, smoke alarms, they have an age on them, and I'm glad we have the, uh, the, the graphic up here on the right. screen. This one is, I won't say who, whose house it's from. It's not mine. <laughs> it's my neighbor's across the street. Um, and so this is from 1999, and smoke wow. alarms have a shelf life of 10 years. Now, why 10 years? Well, there are isotopes inside that detect the smoke particles, and after 10 years, the half-life degrades mm -hmm. and the sensitivity breaks down in the smoke alarm. It doesn't become as sensitive, it doesn't work, and you know, it's not going to do right. what it's supposed to be doing. So you can always tell, you can take these things down mm -hmm. on the back of this, as you can see this is from 1999. Yeah, this is, is the, the one on the date, screen. Date of on manufacture the on, on yeah, the right, right here. On the right, yeah. So uh, this one obviously seven, almost 17 years, uh, 17 years of age, right. so it needs to be replaced. Okay, this other one uh, has uh, one of our newest smoke alarms that we have, has a 10-year battery in it. You'll notice it doesn't have a, uh, a battery, uh, connect, uh, battery cover mm -hmm. on it because it already has a battery that will last for 10 years. Right. And down here, as you can see, the issue date of this is on 2015. So you know, we're good for at least until 2025, and you know, who knows where exactly. all, how old we'll all be until then. So, you can set these up and you're good for a decade. Yeah. And so what we want to do for people is go through your houses and go through these alarms. If you have an older house, uh, when you look at the smoke alarm, check the date on it as well as change the battery on it because it's not just the battery you need to take a look at, it's the date of the smoke alarm. You know, they're not expensive to replace. They aren't. Yeah. And uh, just recently we were in, San, in the city of Santa, Santa Ana. Ana. We actually did a uh, smoke alarm uh, replacement. Uh, oh, you know, nice. Uh, and we, anyone who asked for a smoke alarm received a new smoke alarm. We did. We broke our record. I think we did over a thousand smoke wow. alarms. Yeah, the there. goal was a thousand for the day, and I think we did uh, 1166, I believe, in one day with through with the help of uh, the Red Cross. Also helped us out. We did a yeah. partnership, and yeah. uh, we're able to, you know, hopefully people, save some lives. People fanned out into the neighborhoods, and and, and they brought them. Uh, they were gracious enough to let us into their homes set these smoke detectors, uh, smoke alarms up, and they're good for 10 years. That's what I like yeah, about we, this. We broke the old record, which was uh, San Juan Capistrano, I believe, with yeah. right. 750 that. Yeah. Uh, uh, alarms there. So uh, Santa Ana is now number one in, number uh, one. Number so one in 10 year smoke, smoke alarms. One thing, one thing that we uh, uh, also wanted to mention is, so the, the battery is good for 10 years, but we still um, want people to um, get into the habit of testing them on a monthly basis. Okay. Right. Um, just to make sure that you know there's not a problem with it, that it's still working um, appropriately, and by doing that, all you do is is hold the button down. You just push the button down. I won't do it here on yeah. the yeah. Yeah, so you'll hear a beep, and then you know it's good. And the next month, we encourage the same thing. So just to make sure that um, it's there, it's not forgotten, you know, but it's it's looking out for you, and you're looking out for it. The one I have downstairs always tells me when I'm cooking. Oh, does it? <laughs> so yeah. and what we, we recommend with that is having the smoke uh, alarm at least 10 feet away yeah. from where your stove is. Yeah, mine is, but okay. still. Right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, 
Uh, you know, one thing uh, I like that you have on here, and I have this on all of mine, is the date. Right. And of course, you want to put the sticker on the right way, so you're not looking upside down at it. Yeah. Uh, you can see it here. And um, what I've done is, on some of these, I think I put the end date on right. it. Okay. And I actually dated it a year before it expires, so I yeah. know. Um, but either way, so you know, you actually know that. Yeah. Uh, right. The when easier it's we be can over. make it on folks, you know, we are, we have a saying yeah. in the fire service: smarter, not harder. Yeah. Right. You know, and uh, if we can make it as easy and convenient as possible, then then I think we'll have uh, better success with it. Exactly. Thank now, uh, with the holidays coming up, mm -hmm. we know that a lot of fires start by cooking disasters. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And keeping people safe during that time. Uh, well, really, throughout the year, of course. Right. But. It's even more so because you're hurrying around, you leave yeah. things on the stove and right. things like that, right? Yeah, so um, cooking's always you know, a concern. It's always a, a source of fires, but especially during um, what we're coming up on now, Thanksgiving, a um, couple different reasons. Uh, people w w are so busy, they tend to leave um, things unattended on the stove, um, and that can be a problem. The other thing that comes up um, during the holidays right now is the deep frying of turkeys. And, right. um, you know, as wonderful as it tastes, it's also a um, very dangerous <laughs> um, item to, to do. And um, so um, just need to make sure that people do that. Um, if they do it, obviously, outside of the home, away from the house, and away from any brush, that could be a problem. Um, not out. Um, you want to make sure that, that if you do our, uh, fry a turkey, it's not underneath the eaves of the house. Right. Um, and you know you want to um, you want to just be careful and never leave it unattended. Obviously, exactly. A couple. I don't know if anybody would do that in this community. They, I doubt they, but they might know people. And a couple tips yeah. I can get. I've never done that. Not that I would, because I have a smoker and all that. I'd never okay. go that route. Great. But uh, when you do that, if you know somebody, the tip is number one: put the put the turkey in the pot, fill it with water. Mm -hmm. That's going to tell you your fill line right. once it's in there with the oil. Second of all, is that turkey must be as bone dry. As you don't want it to yeah. come out dry once you <laughs> eat it, but all the moisture off it. Certainly, yeah. if there is any, any pocket of ice in there from being frozen, you have an explosive situation. Right. Oil and water so do not mix in, they do in not cooking. Mix. You yeah. know, and it'll froth over and, and you'll have a problem. Yeah. And it's, it's difficult to contain um, once it does spill over. And, um, you know, again, we want everybody to have a, a wonderful and happy. Yeah. Um, Thanksgiving and um, you know uh, watching your house uh, catch fire is, is not part of the equation. No, no, that's not something you want to remember yeah. on the uh, you know for coming yeah. into Christmas. Yeah, uh, we're actually tomorrow at Orange County Global. Uh, we're going to be doing a demonstration with the uh, with the Orange County Global uh, oh, Hospital in very uh, nice. Huston. Okay, uh, we're going to be doing a example of what can happen if you take a frozen turkey mm -hmm. and drop it into a vat of hot oil. That's right. something we do each year. We talk about you know burn prevention. Uh, we want to show people, you know, the dangerousness of this. Now, what we have is someone in full, uh, full per personal protective yes. equipment. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to, you know, hey, go ahead, and drop the cur turkey uh, in there. Yeah, uh, we're gonna, so people get an idea of exactly how dangerous this could be. Yeah, and for me, as much as I love to cook and all, that's something. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever try. I don't. It's not worth it to me to have a, uh, you know, have that kind of a problem. So yeah. You never know. Absolutely. And just in general with with cooking, and I know you've talked about this before, uh, people tend to keep things on the stove. They walk away from it. I mean, right. if you have like a big pot in the back of the stove, you have it on low. You know, you're simmering right. a stew for right. hours. Mm -hmm. Right. Doesn't mean you can leave the house. No, absolutely. But that, if you want to, you know, you're sitting there doing something else. But it's when you have that hot pan on there with oil in it and all. We yeah. get that. We get that a lot. What happens yeah. is people they, they leave something on the stove. They're boiling eggs. They're cooking dinner. Yeah. And they say this is taking too long. Let's go take a walk, the dog for a walk right. around the block. And then they're taking the dog for a walk around the block. Then they talk to the neighbor. And mm -hmm. then they talk to the next neighbor. And then it's almost 40 minutes later, and they come back. And uh, there's a lot of our uh, fire apparatus out in front of their house. Right. And yeah. That's not a good thing to do. Uh, always, uh, never, never leave cooking unattended. You know? No, uh, never do that. Uh, also, uh, when you're going to be doing cooking, you know, have an idea of what happens if uh, something catches fire. Uh, the first people uh, thing people always want to do is they want to take the ho you know, take the pan off the off the stove, bring it over to the sink, fill it up with water. Right. That's one of the worst things you can do. Get have oil a, and water mixing. Yeah. Right. Not yeah. good. Have have a lid nearby, smothered. Have baking soda nearby. 
uh, have a portable fire extinguisher. Don't be afraid to use those things. Yeah. Exactly. You want something long cooking, get out your crock pot and right. absolutely you know, do it the safe way. And again, you know, don't don't stay there trying to fight the fire. That's that's what our job is. So call nine one one, get your people out of the house and um, you know, we'll we'll take care of it from there. But, you know, planning ahead, obviously, thinking, you know, we, we talk about, um, you know, safety is no accident, mm -hmm. you know, think ahead and uh, prepare for these things. And, and talk to your family about um, if this does happen, how, how would we do it? And I like to try to quiz my kids and say, hey, you know, if, if we did have fire here, how, you know, what would you do? How would you yeah. try to um, solve it and stuff? So. Exactly. Another thing with the holidays, this is extension cord season. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. One of the things we come across a lot, you know, uh, we, you know, people want to have all their lights on their house, and they want to have the lights on their tree, and they all put that together into a single outlet, mm -hmm. uh, what we call uh, the electrical octopus, uh, where you right. plug, uh, you know, two plugs into, you know, most outlets have just two uh, right. connector points into it, and what they have is something where it branches off into three more, and then six more off of that, and then six more off of that. And then what happens is it heats up, and you know then you have a st uh, fire started. Spread your electrical load out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to have your lights on your house and have your lights uh, for your tree, try and spread those things out to different outlets. Most homes have three electrical circuits on it. Uh, for you know people who you know aren't sure, uh, homes generally have three main circuits. As uh, they're called, 15 amp home run right. circuits in their home. And you can call an electrician and you can find out which ones there are. Some people even have little uh, colored, uh, colored stickers on their, uh, on, on their outlets to tell oh, them home which yeah. uh, circuits are, you know, go to which things. And you want to spread the load out. You don't want to put everything onto a single circuit. Uh, because if you do, uh, it, you, know, you have the lights on, you have the Christmas tree lights on, maybe other things going on in the home, it's easy to overwhelm the system. Uh, this is especially true for older homes. Newer homes generally have about a 100, uh, a 100 amp maximum capability on them. Older homes are far less uh, okay. because they were built before uh, there were televisions and Xboxes mm -hmm. and yeah, microwave exactly. ovens and toasters and, and, and things like that. So we want to try and spread that load out. Call an electrician and have them take a look at it and make sure. Also, if you're going to hook things up, use a power strip that actually has a, uh, a fuse on it that will, right. that will, circuit, that will a circuit breaker that will shut trip off yeah. if you overload the system. Uh, it's very, very important. Uh, the, the zip cords that you see, there has a, you know, they're very, very cheap. They right. cost $1.99. <coughs> mm -hmm. You get what you pay for. Right. Uh, so you want to spend a little bit of money. Uh, you know, uh, nothing is worse than regret uh, after a fire has consumed your home. That's true. And we want to make sure that people are, you know, before you put um, an extension cord or, w or whatever wiring that you're using, you know, take a look at it, make sure that it's in good condition, that there aren't any cracks in it, anything like that, that's going to be a, a more of a problem. Um, lighting on a tree or on your house, make sure that it's, um, you know, has a tag on it that says that it's been um, certified mm -hmm. by, like, Underwriter Laboratory is a, is a good um, source to make sure that it's been tested and been approved by all the um, regulating authorities. Um, and, and then, you know, uh, try to use common sense and not overdo it. Um, um, and uh, one of have nice, a happy holiday. One of the nice things now is, of course, the LED lighting, yeah. which draws far less power yes. than what it, less heat. what it used yeah. to be. Yeah. yeah, and no heat, yeah. and, which is nice. Yeah. And uh, so that's, that's a helpful thing. But, you know, you mentioned the power strips, and I'm sure a lot of people have some good quality ones, but they may not have the circuit breaker in them. Right. For instance, the um, the ones that uh, w people use the surge protector kind, mm -hmm. which are great for your electronics. Some have uh, the circuit breaker in them, and some don't. Right? Correct. And again, you know what you want to do is always examine that, make sure. Uh, if you see some uh, eight uh, eight outlet uh, surge protector, they say, you know, check it for make sure it has a, a fusible link or a circuit breaker on it that it can actually be shut off. A lot of them are in the switch themselves. Some of them have a little button on the side uh, where mm -hmm. it will pop off if you if you exceed the 15 amp limit on it. Uh, always examine that and make sure. And if you're not sure, contact the electrician. You know, have you know they can uh, point you to the right direction. These things can be found in any uh, home home stores, uh, you know, DIY shops, and even the supermarkets. Yeah, it's a very common thing. Too. It is, and I've seen some that almost look like your standard outlet. It'll plug into there. Mm -hmm. 
and it's to, it may have it may give you more outlets, but it has a circuit breaker right. built right into it, right? Which is kind of nice. Yeah. You could just you could put put that in there and leave it there. Right. Another thing we come across is people burying their uh, extension cords underneath their carpets mm -hmm. uh, because they're unsightly. Right. Uh, the problem with that is, you know, when electricity passes through a line, it creates heat. Uh, yes. When you vacuum your home, you know, when you're done vacuuming your home and you take the cord out of the wall, it's warm, isn't it? Uh, it's because of all the electricity going through there. Mm -hmm. The resistance going through that cord creates the heat. If you place it underneath the carpet, you have an insulation, almost like a right. winter jacket, and it gets warmer and warmer and warmer. And what can happen is it can actually start the carpet uh, you know, uh, on fire in the walls underneath uh, because of the heat that's generated by it. So, and, and also, you don't want to use these uh, cords as permanent wiring. Right? No. Yeah. So you know, when, when you're done with uh, Christmas, when you're done with uh, putting all the stuff away after the holiday city season is time for all of us to get back to reality. Uh, you know, put those cords away. Don't leave them out, and don't continue to use them as permanent wiring in your home. Exactly. Now you want to talk about the Facebook page, right? So, um, actually, starting tomorrow, um, we're going to start a series um, on Facebook on Orange County Fire Authority's Facebook. Um, we're going to have different topics each week uh, with a safety message uh, leading up to uh, the end of the year. Um, and if, if your viewers will um, come friend us on Facebook and then share it, share the, uh, the post, um, it'll enter them into a contest that we're going to um, conclude at the end of the year with where we'll give away um, a, uh, a gift basket with some safety items in it, um, maybe some Great. Orange County swag. Um, things like that. <laughs> um, so every time that you share um, our holiday uh, message, you'll you'll be entered in that um, drawing, and then at the end of the uh, year, it's going to culminate with, I believe, uh, New Year's Eve and and uh, you know anti drunk driving type of thing. You know, very the, good. Um, and um, and then during the first week of, of January, we'll announce who the winner is, and uh, we may even come out to your your place to. To congratulate you. That'll yeah. be great. Yeah. yeah, Larry will show up at yeah. your door. It's not yeah. exactly like Publishers Clearinghouse, but it'll be no. close. It'll be close. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. And of course, just go on Facebook, search Orange County Fire Authority. Yeah, and, and that's how you'll enter the, the okay. contest as, as well. Um, we also will, will be sending out the same messages on Twitter and um, you know other other social media um, avenues. But, but to actually enter the drawing, you've got to uh, friend us on Facebook and then um, share share our message, you know, and. That's fantastic. Yeah, I encourage people to do that. And, uh, you know, we're fortunate right now, we're getting some rain. We've kind of uh, yes. gotten through this season, although the, the windy season generally might go to the end of November, but we're, we're looking pretty good here. We are looking very good. Uh, fortunately, this year, we've only had a few very yeah. small fires. Uh, yeah, the largest mm -hmm. we had was the Holy uh, Holy Jim Canyon right. fire, which was only uh, about 100 acres. Uh, we've been right. fortunate to get through the season with everything underneath 100 acres, unlike the Silberanas fire in Big Sur right. or the Chimney fire that went, I think, to 100 and, 175,000 mm -hmm. acres. Yeah, exactly. But we're coming into a season now with the rain coming down, we want people to drive more carefully. Right. Uh, the first rains that come down in the season, uh, the roads have had all summer long to build up dirt right. and grime and oil and that or that water gets on there and it's like an ice rink. Mm -hmm. uh, take the time, slow down a little bit. Uh, again, uh, regret is a horrible thing. We, right. we, don't, we want you to get to where you're going safe. And if it means you have to go 20 miles an hour slower, you know, just to maintain control on the road, that's what we need you to do. Uh, nothing's worse than running your car off the road or running into another vehicle and possibly getting somebody hurt. Exactly. Uh, you know, also, you know, if you know, good time to check the windshield wipers. You know, make sure those uh, windshield wipers are brand new or uh, change them out every other year. A lot of people they don't here in Southern California. We don't right. use windshield wipers yeah. that much, uh, but when we do, sometimes it, it, it looks worse when you for do them the first yeah. time of the season. So make those make sure those things work. Make sure you have the the tires on your car are well maintained, and take take it easy on the road. Exactly. Uh, we we don't want yeah. your business. Uh, no, we, we would rather we would rather not go on any calls. You if, know, if one possible. more thing. You're talking about safety. We mm -hmm. didn't touch on. Getting up on ladders, putting up those Christmas lights, yeah. right? Unfortunately, yeah. you know, every year, you know, we respond to people that, um, you know, are are up on a ladder, 
um, will fall and uh, you know um, you know fatalities actually occur yeah. not just injuries so um, you know whenever you're up on a ladder make sure it's on firm footing um, it's best to have somebody with you to, to kind of keep an eye on things um, you got to consider also your ability your health on whether or not you should be up there or um, you know maybe maybe you should think about um, there are services out there that can there help are, you yeah. with, with lighting, stuff like that. Again, you know, the holiday season is supposed to be a, a joyous and uh, fun time for the family and yeah. stuff, and either being laid up in the hospital or um, worse, that's not what, uh, what it's supposed to be about. No, not at all. As you said, have a safe holiday. Larry, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much for having Captain us. Captain Larry Kurtz. Can Ray, I are you a you. captain as well? Uh, no, I'm, okay. I'm not. All right. <laughs> I want to make sure that I didn't, you know, but if you'd like to put a good word in, I appreciate <laughs> it. Larry? All right. Absolutely. You <laughs> <We> should do it. <laughs> Randy, thank you for coming. Thank I'm you very sure much. We'll see you again. Uh, awesome. All right. Great. All right. Remember, go on Facebook. Uh, just do a search for the Orange County Fire Authority. Like them, and boom, you're automatically entered into the contest. We'll be right back. We'll get you.